Well, everybody's starting to assemble for the main event here at the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. The ring is filling, and that means Boyd Pierce can have the opportunity to introduce him. And you see Ivan Koloff over there wielding a red shovel and evidently has plans for Tony Atlas. But let's let Boyd Pierce this event, pick up. Two out of three fall with a one hour time limit in the blue corner. 250 pounds from Roanoke, Virginia, Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Across the ring from Russia. In the red corner, 245 pounds with the shovel that he says he's brought here to bury all American wrestlers with, Ivan Koloff, your referee, Bronco Libby. Ivan Koloff, a rugged Russian, the man who stopped the long winning streak of WWWF champion Bruno Sammartino in New York City's Madison Square Garden. And the toughness of Koloff and his Russian tactics now in against Mr. USA. It's Mr. Russia against Mr. USA with Tony Atlas ready to defend his Mr. USA title, which is the title he won in a bodybuilding contest. But he's willing to defend it in wrestling. Magnificent physique. And Koloff hasn't shut up one time since he came into the ring. Part of his psychology is to, is to uh, get after the individual and to browbeat him before the match starts. Tony Atlas, one of the five... You hear the fans behind chanting, you can't beat Texas, which is a cry that Tony Atlas brought into Texas wrestling. And he just said, you can't beat Texas. He loves it here in spite of the fact that he comes from Virginia. And I don't think Ivan Koloff appreciates Texas or any place else. The effort now between the well-muscled body of Tony Atlas and the power of Tony Atlas against the ruggedness and the toughness of the man from Moscow. And again, his psychology is to tell the fans what he thinks and what he thinks of them, which is not always a smart strategy. Front headlock, and he worked his way in there with that foot to force the opening. It's Tony Atlas caught now in a grinding front headlock, and that can be a grinding hold. It's one of those things that really can cinch up on you as you move, and every move you make, you've got a forearm stuck alongside your jaw, and you're grinding your teeth together. Koloff's bald head Atlas with those huge muscles of his suddenly putting him to work to be able to lift and to throw. And again, Koloff claims that everything that's happened to him has happened to the garment that he's wearing, but it ain't necessarily so just because Koloff makes the claim. So Russia finds that the Mr. USA has suddenly been able to dish out punishment. And these are two tough, indi oh, tough individuals and a hard landing. He threw him high and as Sputnik came down that time, he landed with a crash. There was no parachute to dull his landing. Constant sparring here for openings. Each of them wants to win this first fall. It's always good to be a fall ahead. And Koloff, of course, is a veteran of wrestling on several continents, several styles. Greco-Roman catches catch can 
American style and European style, and there are differences. Here is a test of strength. The short arms of Koloff trying to match up against the powerful 22-inch biceps of Mr. USA. And again, Koloff lets out a roar of triumph trying to tell the fans here what he's gaining in, in advantage over, over Tony Atlas. And you can't beat Texas, sounds off again. So Atlas, shoulders close. You see the referee looking, shoulders down, two, and not quite as Atlas now starts to get into trouble. He exerts the power. Look at that body. Look at that arm. That left arm of his he's, is the one he's really using. And the fans giving him the go, go, go signal. And Tony comes around from an almost impossible position to even things and to stack up against Ivan Koloff. Tony trying to rise up, and he does get into that solid position. And now he's got the advantage, and with his height, he's going to have a definite advantage as he puts the pressure on to Mr. USSR. He drop kicks well, I'll tell you. He's got springs in his legs when it comes to uh, getting up in the air and shooting those feet out, and for a man who spends much of his time pushing iron around, pumping iron. He moves with the dexterity of a lightweight. Outside, Ivan Koloff. And Koloff is having all the argument he can handle on the outside. When he picks an argument with some of these vociferous Houston fans, he runs into problems. They're gonna fight him word for word. Double wrist lock for Ivan Koloff as he takes that powerful right arm and tries to put the twist on it, to turn it up behind the back of Tony Atlas into a hammerlock. But he is stopped. Tony gets, feels that arm going up there, but he's exerting pressure. He has nothing to exert it with except his arm, whereas the two arms of Koloff are really working him over. And here come You Can't Beat Texas is resounding all over this place. Tony Atlas, and he makes a switch. Japanese arm block, and he takes him down. A good switch by Tony. He waited his turn and then made the turn. He's got a figure four arm block right now. Good position. And again, the Russian mouth keeps sounding off and he tells the referee what he ought to be doing. Koloff is a torrent of invective as he stays up in that ring and fights off everything that's done with a babble of words and a tough attack. Nice work by Tony. Good, nimble work, and he comes over there beautifully. Long been an argument among people who don't lift weights and don't believe in lifting weights, that weightlifting ties you up and inhibits your muscular movement. But they've never seen Tony Atlas in action. So he crowds Ivan Koloff into the, into the corner, keeps the pressure on, on the Russian. And the Russian's becoming upset at the, at the you can't beat Texas behind us. He's telling him to shut up. <laughs> this could prove to be almost as impossible a task as trying to outmuscle Tony Atlas. But it's got the dander of the Russian aroused, and you see him on corking and walloping, trying to put that magnificent mountain of muscle into a mass of helplessness on, on the mat. Tony 
is caught now in a successive succession of punishments that he hasn't had yet in this in this battle but this time he rolled right out of it and there again the usefulness of that muscle came in mighty mighty handy Tony with a lumbering wallop that brings muscle against bone. Oh, Tim Burr. There goes Ivan looking for the outside and a place to hold up. Ivan bent over, rubbing his arm. The right arm, he's got a big bandage on that right arm and a and an arm guard, such as you might wear on an elbow or a knee. A, and he has come over there to clobber Tony Atlas. He's on top, we could have a fall. We've got a fall. We've got a fall here with Tony Atlas getting clubbed by that. He was clubbed by that right arm of Ivan Koloff, who looks particularly well pleased with his accomplishment of, with one blow, laying out Tony Atlas and putting him down on that canvas. The first fall of this two out of three fall match has gone now to the Russian, Mr. Russia, and he's claiming that he's got a sore arm as Bronco Lubitsch tries to feel it. We'll be back here in a moment after we have this word from the studio. The community can give, but time and money the peace officer can give his life. Join the 100 Club. This is Channel 39, KHTV, Houston. So as the bell sounds, it's the Russian in moving in on Tony again, and that arm that he said was hurting him. You can see that he doesn't spare it. Here comes a fall, there's one, there's, well, there was close. He was trying to follow up on the concussion of the first fall by adding to Tony Atlas's woes in the second. And a solid grip he's got on the huge trapezius muscle on the right side of the neck of uh, Tony Atlas. Big Tony trying to fight off the grip, and he's got plenty there to grab. And of course, that, that's what the problem is right now, as he lays it in there and puts the big squeeze. And Tony's having his tough moments. Ivan Koloff rearing in there and trying to literally push him through that canvas. This could be it. Tony's one fall behind, and if the referee decides that he's had too much punishment, he can stop the match. And especially if that arm refuses to respond. If Tony can't control it, then it could be that that's going to be it. You're looking at the Russian as he bears down on the big trapezius muscle of the boy from Virginia, Tony Atlas, Mr. USA is starting to rise. He's starting to get everything together, calling on all those muscles to mount an attack. And as he does, he's gonna make it difficult for Koloff to hang on to that grip. The fans are with Atlas, they are screaming. They have changed from you can't beat Texas to just giving him a go, come on, go, come on, go. And Tony now, as he stands straight, whoops, he's brought down now where Koloff can work on that muscle again, and referee Bronco Lubitsch comes in there to, to question him. He asks him if he wants to quit. Usually, he asks him a question where that if he says no, it means he does not want to quit. You can't ask a man questions where he's going to have to think under these circumstances. Yeah. 
So Atlas trying to fight his way out of the grip the Russian has on him and the powerhouse rises to his feet. He is up and he swings that elbow well. Koloff knows a good thing when he sees it. You saw him snatch him by the trunks and jerk him off balance that time, as well as grab him by the, by the muscle. The big trapezius muscle, the one that holds up your neck, a diamond-shaped muscle that comes on, uh, on your back and holds that head up straight and is the powerhouse force of, the, of a man with a big neck. So Atlas held that arm up. You couldn't see it because the body of Koloff was in the way. But as he, as Tony fights it off, you see him now working hard to get into position. And here he is fighting a little bit more. He's got to get rid of that to get all of the power back in that right hand of his. The longer it holds on there, it interferes with circulation. It interferes with the nerve power. The elbow work. Now, if he can get that arm working, he's going to... There he is. You see him trying to swing it around. He's got to use it. Now he's using it. Now he's using it. Whether he's using it full power or not, he's using it, and that makes the difference. Bear hug. That's the way to use it. And he's putting the squeeze on Russia for sure. And this time, again, he swung that right arm of his, the one with the bandage on it, or the, the covering, the, the last, there it is. I was gonna say knee pad. I could be wrong, it may be an elbow pad, but it is uh, ostensibly used for that purpose. You see, as he swings it around, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the manner in which he is able to hit a man with it. He's trying to get that muscle again. He may make it, but he's, got, he's vulnerable because he's in front of Tony Atlas. And they hit hard. They hit hard, and Tony may have caught more than his share because Atlas is starting to move, or rather, Koloff is starting to move. And here he comes, looking for the opportunity to land on Tony Atlas. He waited. Tony waited there and took a chance so that the Russian would be tempted to jump. And now he starts to take charge. And Koloff that time may have gotten a real injury on his I don't know whether that one on the right arm is a real or just a guise to permit him to use that covering on his arm. He, the equalizing fall goes to Tony Atlas with a combination of things that he does well. So Tony, Tony Atlas evens things. He took a lot of punishment in that fall, but there is still one fall to go, and this roughhouse match here. The, now the people are starting to complain, uh, telling Tony about that forearm, about the bandage on the forearm, and telling the referee, and the referee gets around there to look at it, and he says it hurts. The, the Russian says it hurts. The fans start screaming, screaming more. We'll be back here in a moment after we have this word from the studio. Have you ever had your brakes checked? I think you need a brake check. Did you know the brake check? We check your brakes free. Go on, brake check. Yeah. Go on, brake check. Go on, brake check. Go on, brake check. Have you ever had your brakes checked? I think that bandage of Ivan Koloff and the referee has decided that the bandage is there for legitimate reasons. 
And Koloff is still working on it, twisting it around. He's got a different portion of it to the front that he had just a little while ago. He had that hole in the front. Now he's got the other part of the bandage there. And referee Bronco Lubitsch looks it over. And the fans are up in arms and trying to get the referee to, to act. And here is Atlas trying now to uncork on Ivan Koloff. And uncork he does and lays it in there. His driving, diving headbutt. There's one. There's, well, we had part of it, but we didn't have enough of it. And Tony is after the, after the bandage. And he caught a wallop with that bandage on that on that on that bicep. Oh, solid wallop! And the Russian comes in to try to set him up. There he is setting him up for the clothesline, but it didn't work. But that worked, and it worked solid and worked hard. He's going after the bandage again. He's trying to get it off. He's got it off. He's got the the bandage off, and at least. He has, un there he's got it now. And it's in Tony Atlas's hand and he is now going after Ivan Koloff with it. And Koloff suspects the worst as he starts after him. So Tony Atlas gives Ivan Koloff a taste of his own medicine here as he blasts away at him. And as the referee tries to take it away from him, Tony just got him out of the way. So now uh, Tony has moved that down on his, on his fist. And he starts, whoa, he's lobbing him across the kisser. And the referee is going to going to disqualify Tony Atlas for throwing him down and we've got a case of uh, now he, it looks to me like Bronco Lubitsch wants to give it to Tony Atlas and they look neither one of these guys want the referee to interfere we've got a battle going on here where the ring post and Ivan Koloff is now a um, Bleeding and bleeding badly from the head. The referee, Danny the Chain, has come down to the to the ringside, and this thing has obviously broken completely out of uh, out of whack. As Tony Atlas now takes that chair and lays it in on the head of of Ivan Koloff, and uh, Bronco Lubitsch is someplace around. Where's Bronco Lubitsch? The the chain has come. No, and now Tony Atlas gets up into the ring. So does Danny McShane. Here is Lubitsch coming around to get, get after him. And they, they start to maneuver. There's the, the grip. Tony, uh, Danny McShane is not uh, able to do uh, that. Well, it looks to me like the referees are uh, not able to get this under control. And... It's Koloff and Atlas as, as everything has busted wide open. And I, McChain can't hold him. And again, Tony Atlas has that bandage in his hand. Here comes the Camela Diablo and number one and number two as they try to uh, put a stop to, to this and get it under control. I, I don't know what decision has been made, but we've got wrestlers up into the ring trying to uh, put a stop to it, and they finally have uh, Atlas uh, under control for a while, and he has come in here to blast away at Ivan Koloff, and it has busted loose again. And the, that's the Russian, Mr. Russia being held, and the, up here they've got, and the Russian is throwing people around. And the Russian just caught it from Tony Atlas. Oh. No. So the Russian is outside the ring. 
Both men have been disqualified here in this third and final fall of this wild battle here at the Sam Houston Coliseum, and you're looking at the face of Mr. Rusher as he tries to get back up in that, that ring where Tony Atlas is waiting, and the, uh, the Diablo twins are trying to hold him loose, keep him from getting into the ring. McShane trying to step in front of him, and the Russian is trying to get in, and Tony is more than ready. He's telling him to pick up that weapon that, that, that he struck him with. And things have not quieted down, not at all, as the Russian here kicks his way loose. We've got Atlas and Koloff all over again. And well, the battle is over, but you'd never know it. And Atlas again blasts away at Ivan Koloff. Tony Atlas trying for a high dive, and there goes the Russian holding onto his head, and he's off here on the concrete. And with Tony Atlas and Ivan Koloff, and the match ends with both men disqualified. That is a wild, wild scene. We'll be back here in a moment after this word from the studio.